Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting concept that goes towards solving for some of the potential problems with centralized custody, particularly when you think about 8 billion people uh, on this planet that will ultimately need to use Bitcoin. And that is something being called Fediment. Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin pleb, and all around raging capitalist. And I know it is the beginning of a new month and I would typically be doing the monthly Bitcoin digest as I usually do. For this month's edition, I'm actually just going to do uh, two separate videos. My main topic for this month's monthly digest was gonna be a review of two different technologies that have been around for a little bit of time, but that are getting a lot more momentum. You've probably seen recent discussion about them. So today I'm gonna to be doing a video on Fediment, which is one of the two. And then in a future video, probably released next week, I'll be putting a video out on Bolt 12. So two very, very interesting areas of innovation. I definitely have my eye on other things, including the news swirling around today regarding this you know, letter of 26 really salty people. But in any case, that's the plan. Today we'll focus on Fediment. For those returning to the channel, welcome my friends as always. It is a pleasure to have you. And for those new, I welcome you as well. If you like this type of content, I invite you to subscribe, like it, share it. YouTube seems to love sharing these days. And I think the idea we're talking about today is a really important one that has uh, kind of far reaching potential implications. With all that being said, let's jump into the meat for today. So part of what prompted the general topic of covering some of the different innovation areas for this month's uh, monthly digest, which again, I'm sort of breaking up into multiple videos, is the following tweet thread. Uh, so there was this post from Namcios, who's a frequent contributor. I don't know if this individual works at Bitcoin Magazine, but frequent contributor to Bitcoin Magazine. He's going through a panel discussion from the Oslo Freedom Forum, where it sort of explains the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. Maybe that would be a good topic for a future video. Let me know if you'd like to see something like that uh, in the comments down below. But in any case, you've got this response from Bren. Bren says, anything that lives on top of Bitcoin will be better than the legacy system. He's quoting that from the thread. There's name three things built on Bitcoin that isn't the Lightning Network. Go. To which I had the pleasure of responding with this graphic. Um, and even this is a little bit dated. I think I probably first found this maybe a year or two ago. But as you can see, there's a ton of different stuff, right? And great things in this diagram have, uh, you know, very, very low or even negligible usage or are maybe even, you know, a little bit dated and deprecated. But there's major systems like ION for decentralized identity that are built on top of Bitcoin. And so we often think of Bitcoin as this kind of purposefully slow moving protocol and that's exactly what you want in your base foundation of money you know in your ultimate settlement layer you want that to be as hardcore as immutable as non-changing as possible and so that's part of the very fabric of why bitcoin is unique and special but to suggest that there's not an enormous amount of uh, innovative efforts happening you know on and around bitcoin is is obviously silly and so while it's not explicitly on this graphic i wanted to just pick an example of something you know totally outside the lightning network uh, that I think is really interesting. And it is called Fediment, as we will discuss. That's sort of smushing together Federation uh, and Chaumian mints. And so let me try and motivate this by painting the uh, problem or potential problem that this is seeking to solve. So first of all is the recognition that not every human on earth may ever get their own on-chain UTXO or unspent transaction output, right? When I send Bitcoin to a friend or whomever, I construct that transaction using my UTXOs, which are unspent transaction outputs, which is a bit of a mouthful. A lot of people don't like uh, <laughs> UTXOs, but that sort of is what it is, right? You know, Bitcoin fundamentally uses this UTXO uh, kind of accounting method. And so you may think, well, wait a second, there's, you know, 21 quadrillion Satoshis. Well, and, you know, in theory, there could be a fork in the future that makes it even more divisible. While that's true, keep in mind that, you know, every UTXO is made up of many, 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 many Satoshis, right? And so if you look out at the UTXO set, that is the Bitcoin blockchain, it's really not hard to imagine a world where not all 8 billion people are going to have on-chain UTXO. And 
there could potentially be a future state where on-chain fees have gotten quite quite expensive. This also somewhat ties in with what you'll often hear around the you know Lightning Network, right? Like how do you open channels for everyone to be able to use Lightning in a truly self-sovereign way? There's analysis out there that shows you know if you were to dedicate all the block space in every single one of Bitcoin's blocks for the next, you know, however long, it's a massive amount of time in order to create all these lightning channels which require on-chain settlement to do so. So that's part of the problem, right? This kind of recognition around scaling considerations. But then there's also what we've seen with a lot of regulatory creep, uh, particularly coming out of Europe, where, you know, centralized exchanges and custodians are demanding more and more information from users about well, tell me about this address that you're trying to withdraw your Bitcoin to. Do you truly own it? What are you withdrawing for? You know, what are you going to use your Bitcoin for? Right. This is not only nonsensical, it is dangerous to self-sovereignty. So Fediment is being proposed as a new way to custody where groups of individuals can form and band together. And you basically have these kind of guardian users who are going to be the ones that are you know most capable with proficiency in running a node proficiency in using you know hardware wallets and different things like that and these would be the kind of designated individuals to manage things on behalf of others now your knee-jerk reaction to that may rightly be whoa 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 wait a second right i thought this was all about trustlessness permissionlessness what in the heck are we doing but think about it right like if you are anywhere even remotely proficient in terms of using these different tools uh, for cus you know for self custody there's probably a pretty good chance that you're anyways already custodying someone's balance on their behalf maybe a friend maybe a family member 70 year old parent or grandparent right so part of the idea is that this group of individuals already has some degree of trust maybe it's a local community for example although as we will discuss later on you know this does pose some interesting kind of open questions but suffice it to say, the analogy for this concept is kind of like a community bank that happens to be blind to the transactions that are happening amongst its users. And so this is a huge improvement, particularly in terms of privacy relative to centralized third parties like exchanges. But it absolutely is the case that the user still has to kind of trust the mint uh, and the, the federation, as we will discuss. And so there is a trade-off here, right? You cannot have your cake and eat it too. What's also interesting is that this Fediment could also plug into the Lightning Network and be interoperable with other Lightning Network nodes. And so you now start to have the pieces of not only solving a lot of the kind of custodial open questions, right? Like we don't want to end up in a world where, where 7 billion people have their Bitcoin stored with centralized entities, right? That's that's not a future that we want. That is not good for self-sovereignty. And at the same time, how do we ensure scalability? So let's break down a little bit more about how this would actually work. So the two critical concepts that this is fusing together are federations and Chaumian mints, hence Fediman. So a federation is essentially a group of distributed kind of guardians, right? Those sort of power users that, that are ultimately looking after the Bitcoin of the group. And critically, this would be some sort of multi-sig setup such that there is no single point of failure amongst this Korean group uh, or amongst the Federation. And this is reasonably similar to the federations that power some of the side chains to Bitcoin, such as Liquid, for example. So the key concept there is you ensure that the Federation is not going to collapse down to this single point of failure, which, for example, would be a centralized exchange. And then Xiaomi and Mints or Xiaomi and E-Mints are really one of the earliest e-cash concepts. So this dates quite a ways back and it's really a cryptographic tool that allows the federation to process transactions on behalf of the group without knowing things about the group's members such as who they are, what balances they have. So this ensures a strong degree of privacy. And so presumably you would have, you know, a group member coming to this mint, depositing their bitcoin, getting uh, some sort of token, which is essentially kind of an IOU bitcoin. This is again very similar to what you get with LBTC or Liquid BTC or RBTC in the case of the rootstock uh, blockchain that Sovereign uses. And users can now you know, do whatever with those IOUs essentially. And we can have a look at this helpful comparison, which granted I do think gives probably more of a positive spin to Fediman and more of a negative spin to kind of true, true self custody. In any case, it makes the, it makes the point. So what we're looking at is a table with three different options, right? You know, the option most on the left is 
third party, you know, some sort of centralized entity or custodian or exchange where granted it's quite easy to use. You have, you know, this is the absolute worst option for self-sovereignty. It's a single point of failure. These exchanges can rehypothecate and do all sorts of financial shenanigans with your Bitcoin. So general, generally pretty awful. And again, I would be incredibly sad to see a world where you know, seven and a half billion people have their Bitcoin in either exchanges or, or some sort of centralized bank. Next option is like a hardware wallet. So sort of true self-sovereignty. Now, again, this is where I think it's a little overly negative. You could easily argue that, well, wait a second, like sure, it's less simple to use maybe than an exchange, but like that's a relative comparison, you know, in, in isolation, it quote simple to use in relation to the benefit that it confers to me. So I think you could argue this obviously. Uh, and by the way, my recommendation to anyone listening is to absolutely stick with the middle option. I'm, I'm, this is certainly not uh, a recommendation to do something like Fediment, but rather I think this, this is inevitably going to be something that needs to be seriously considered and it's likely something that is going to be truly necessary for Bitcoin to become this kind of global financial system. And then you get all the way to the right. So again, this is a classic kind of three options where the last one has checks magically for all the boxes. Again, I don't think that is quite, quite true, but the idea here is that is somewhat of a middle ground between the two. So it's it would be a lot easier for the I mean just again think of you know think of your parent think of your you know normie friend that has no idea about any of this stuff like it is true like you if you're serious with yourself you would probably admit that yeah it's unlikely that we're going to get 7 and a half billion people all with hardware wallets all taking self custody like that's just not reasonable and so Fediment is sort of a middle ground where Trust still needs to be placed by the user, but it's trust in a federation and not in a single centralized entity. And so naturally, one of the criticisms to this is, well, does this really sufficiently reduce counterparty risk? What's to stop the federation from just off and you know, running away with the user's Bitcoin? Part of the answer is the kind of multi-sig setup that would presumably be governing the security of the federation, but like what's to stop the federation members from colluding? You could also imagine denial of service attack vectors, right? What's to stop the federation from denying service to certain members for whatever reason, right? Maybe in an ideal world, you have geographic distribution of this federation in multiple jurisdictions such that if something regulatory happens and they go after the federation in one jurisdiction, you know, the it can still work. It's, but then again, that sort of begs the question of like, well, what are these communities that are going to form these uh, community banks? The other consideration is, well, if I'm receiving this sort of token that essentially is an IOU for Bitcoin, what can I do with those tokens? You know, can I use them interoperably with other mints or is that gonna pose issues? So suffice to say, there's a lot of different challenges and issues with this. I think it's a fascinating area of research. There are currently a couple different efforts exploring, researching and beginning to kind of build this out. There's something called a script as well as a mini mint. I'll flash a few resources up here and I'll also put some links in the description down below so you can take a closer look at some of this as well. But all of this has picked up some steam recently. Uh, Blockstream announced its kind of sponsorship of these concepts back in October 2021. And then there was a session at the Bitcoin conference just a few months ago that also covered the topic. Uh, and since then, I think you've seen more and more people start to talk about it. So really interesting. Let's go ahead with all that and close today's video out. All right, so there you have it. Today we covered Fediment or Federated Chaumian Mints. It's a concept really that's been around for quite some time. It's recently gotten some more attention and momentum. And on the one hand, I really do believe something like this is going to be necessary to ensure that we avoid a fate where seven and a half billion people in the world all have their Bitcoin in some sort of centralized entity or exchange or bank-like thing. But on the other hand, as we discussed, there's a lot of valid criticisms around would this really sufficiently reduce counterparty risk? Is this really a middle ground or are we compromising on things that you know just shouldn't be compromised? And if nothing else, I hope this whole discussion has inspired you to think deeply about some of these topics because I think these are the discussions that, that we need to be having in the community that we need to be pulling and sharing with each other because 
no one has all the answers yet, right? And so it's fascinating to watch this kind of decentralized web of actors come together and think critically about these big meaty questions to further Bitcoin. But I'm curious to hear, what are your thoughts? What do you think of Fediment? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you found this interesting, thought-provoking, and valuable. If you did, you already know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, because we'll definitely be covering other interesting topics similar to this going forward. Uh, and as I mentioned, give it a share if you think there's someone who could benefit from thinking deeply about these topics. That definitely helps the YouTube algorithm these days. We'll go ahead and leave things there for now. As a reminder, my friends, every sack counts. And until next time, I'll see you then. <laughs>